treasure. 
Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? To a life that doesn't have limits and boundaries. Right before this, Jesus had told his disciples and the crowd about the necessity of receiving the kingdom of God as a little child. But now this man in front of him kneeling wants to know what he needs to do to get it. His use of that action verb, do, indicates that this man was someone who was used to working hard, accomplishing what he wanted. And he was earnest. So Jesus responded with a little verbal play of his own. Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Hint, hint. Not even really hard-working men like you. Then Jesus listed what faithfulness looks like. The man quickly responded, Teacher, I've done all these things since I was young. And Jesus' response was to look at him and love him. Now this is where Jesus surprises us with his willingness to be God with us. For in order to really look at him, Jesus must have knelt down so he could see directly in the man's eyes. And as he did, Jesus decided to speak the truth about what he saw. He loved that man so much that he simply could not let him stay the same. You lack one thing, he said. Huh. I remember when I was filling out an application for my first sabbatical. And I was confronting some of my shadows about why do I need a rest? Why would I deserve a sabbatical? And I went and saw a counselor because I felt like I was kind of depressed. But, and the counselor said, no, Mike, you're not depressed. You're just being honest with yourself. And I said, well, what should I write about in my sabbatical? What should it be about? And he said, well, you should eliminate hurry from your life. And I wrote that down, and then I looked up, and I said, well, what else? And he said, there is nothing else. That's the only thing. Jesus told this man, you lack one thing. And it must have thrown the guy off guard. Because to his knowledge, he didn't lack anything. And Jesus says, Get rid of whatever separates you from others, and then come follow me. Well, here at Prince of Peace, we will soon be talking about our financial support of our 2022 ministries. And after reading this story from Mark, our congregation's need is not why I want you to think about giving money to the church. Instead, Let's consider what each of us needs for the sake of our own spirits. One way this story rings true is that our financial giving to God is really not about making sure that we fundraise for our church budget. Instead, that yearly act of filling out a statement of intent for giving, that act of giving our money away, is mostly about what do we need to give so we can remember who we are. Another way to put it might be the challenge is to figure out how much of our money do we need to give away to actively resist the power of money as money tries to control our self-worth and our self-image. As Jesus points out to the disciples after the man leaves, that how much stuff we have is not what defines us. You know, for every Sunday in September we had a baptism. And at every baptism around the baptismal font, we said the only one who defines us is God. God is the only one who gets to tell us who we are and what we're capable of being, no matter how beautiful it sounds. But remembering this truth as we sit surrounded by our culture of the one with the most toys wins, it takes intentional effort. Simplicity is that practice to remove the clutter that seeks to define us. Our possessions seek to own us. One way
only we can live simple lives and keep the, this truth that we're defined by God's love in front of us all the time is to consciously enter each day saying, I'm going to be generous today with my time, with my attention, with my treasures, with my love. By consciously trying to unclench our hands each day in order to give rather than to take. That's why every year we go through this ritual about considering what to give to church. If we do it so that we think deeply about the amount that we need to give in order to be liberated from money's control over us. And make no mistake about it, money is powerful. It has the power to connect us to other people when we use it well. And it has the power to separate us from others. It's this battle over who and what it tells us to do, <laughs> what it tells us who we are and what we're worth that Jesus is talking about with this man. Because to Jesus, the opposite of rich is not poor. The opposite of rich is free. The man was being asked to move out of this carefully constructed world of security where he does things, he's in control. And this time, he walked away from Jesus' invitation. Jesus' invitation to be free from the daily grind, from the from the self-worth giving power of money. And he went back into the solitary confinement of do, 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 hurry, 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 go, 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 earn, earn, earn. We too have a decision to make as we seek that life that is roomy and spacious, that life where freedom prevails. It's the decision to do what we can do regularly to turn from the power of possessions in order to feel and experience the power of love. What would it take to take Jesus at his word as he looks at us and loves us and offers us the same call? Follow me. Let me tell you who you are and who you're capable of becoming. The question becomes, Will we choose this space, spacious freedom of Jesus' question or the confinement of our small security? Amen. great 
such a ri uh, visually rich hymn. Faith begins by letting go. Faith endures by holding on. Faith matures by reaching out. Our worship continues with the prayer of the church. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church and the world and all who are little ones. Hear us quickly, Lord, for our minds soon wander to other things that we're more concerned about than we are with you. In your love, catch us with a sudden stab of beauty or a truthful, sharp question that will give us pause for a moment to look at ourselves and the unutterable terror and hope inside of us just to be loved by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our words at times seem small. Please listen to our tears for we have lost so much and we fear losing more. And listen to our sweat, for we are working so hard to keep up. And listen to our sighs, for they are our wordless prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, listen to our growling guts, for we hunger for bread and intimacy. Listen to our curses, for we are angry at the way the world disregards and is indifferent toward one another. Listen to our groans as we ache toward healing. Listen to our footsteps as we stumble to bring good tidings to someone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen to our humming, for sometimes we perceive the rhythms of creation, and then music without words rises in us to meet it, and there is joy. Let those moments when the sunlight strikes just right or the stars pierce the darkness just enough and everything is so transparent that our hands open up and stop their grasping and just for a moment we are aware that all we really need comes to us as a gift. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts that are known only to you as we pray in Jesus' strong and gentle name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear the words of the Lord and know that you are holy, honored, precious, and loved. The blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit guard your going out and your coming in. Amen. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.